More! I just needed something to like humor myself. Yeah. Okay, just leave that shelf alone. We could tear up any of that. I mean, I guess more. Here's some more backstory if you want it. Okay, you should write that. Thanks. And then I'll do it. Oh. You will? <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm here with the actors from the film Evan at the Crack of Dawn, Chanel and Deo. We just released it on the main channel. Check it out and come back for the extended interview. Chanel actually built the world for Dawn and her mm. angel world. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's very much yeah. in there, even though it's not talked about in the there's script. There's rules and there's, 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 yes. there's a feeling of, um, there's, a, there's a hierarchy. Yes. You know? And yes. you feel that even in like the small comments that she makes, it's yes. like, oh, she's coming from a place where she has to do this thing. At the time, we had like a tiny little table read with just like the two of us and the producer and our director, Roxy. And I brought just like my binder of, of like <laughs> backstory that I had for Dawn. What I had built was that she belonged to this department in, in heaven called the Legion of the Lost or LOL. <laughs> and it was just like, I just needed something to like humor myself, yeah. you know, because what we're going to talk about is so deep and painful. Yeah. And I'm somebody who uses comedy and humor to enter into things that are uncomfortable. Yeah. How did you decide, because if it was a personal experience, how did you decide to play Don and not the Evan character? If, Ooh. Because just <laughs> like, you know, you would think that I, I'll write the thing that I felt, right? Yeah. But then you switched it. I don't know. It never crossed my mind that the character of Evan would be a female that mirrored me, even though I was like, okay, sure, we have parallel experiences and parallel feelings. It just, for some reason, it never crossed my mm. mind. Dawn actually wasn't even supposed to be that big of a role. At first, Dawn was just supposed to be some, some like small character that passed through. But mm. the more that I started writing her, she just felt really interesting to me. And then that's when I was like, oh, I want to play Dawn. Yeah, yeah. The location is pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, you open on this wide of a, I don't want to say desolate, but like empty. Dilapidated. Yeah. W where'd you find that and like, was it, what was it like shooting there? Oh, that was all thanks to our director, Roxy. Roxy. She, um, she loves so Palmdale. She loves, she calls herself <laughs> the queen of Palmdale. I remember that. Um, so I think she went location scouting and she just knew in Palmdale was where mm. all the exteriors were going to be. And then for the interior location, it was just one location at a house. I mean, sh I'm sure you guys know, like location scouting can be really difficult and tedious and you're just hopping around from place to place. Yeah. But actually that location was the first place they saw and they just fell in love and what? they just knew it. Wow. And they were just like, there's no point in looking any further. It was just the house. Wow. Dale, what was it like being on set, um, you know, in the in this de desert, desolate area, but also in this amazing house? Like, did it, did it help um, create the world for you? Definitely, especially, um, I went, when we went into the house, I didn't know that it was already set decked oh. by our wonderful team, Violet. Uh, Violet Overn and, and Casey. And, Casey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really and it was already set. I came in thing like, oh, you guys found perfect location. <laughs> <laughs> like just a, a green newbie being like, wow, this is perfect. But they had like helped wow. deck it out. The the men's whose house we were renting the space from, uh, it was actually very chill mm -hmm. about just the space. We were That's like, cool. there's a scene where we're gonna tear up some books. And we, we had, Violet brought her own, like yeah. things that we could tear. And he was like, okay, just leave that shelf alone. You could tear up any of that. And we were like, no, Wait, we his don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. But he was just completely was awesome. open to like, yeah, Whoa. go ahead, just leave this little section clean. But stepping on that set really was like, whoo, okay, yeah. we're in this new world now. And, mm -hmm. and they made it a lot easier for us just to get kind of absorbed. Yeah. That house is a character in and of itself, of right? Yeah. It feels It feels like, packed and stuffed and, and insulated yeah. and it helps with like keeping these two characters trapped in that mm -hmm. space so i think the char the, the house itself was definitely it was, a character how is it um balancing like being a writer and maybe having certain um performances already in your head mm -hmm. or, or deliveries mm -hmm. but also being mm -hmm. um an actor, an actor? Oh, uh, good that's question great. um i think what really helped was the crew having uh the feeling safe around the crew like Roxy, our director, really brought on such a solid team. Mm -hmm. So I felt safe and comfortable to fail and make mistakes. Like That's if something cool. didn't work, I could try again. And so I think having a supportive crew is so vital. So that way when I step on set, I can just be an actor. Um, and I, I honestly truly attest like being able to balance it all was, was having the, the yeah. strength of the crew behind me. Cool. 
Yeah, it's all about the crew. Really you only is. see two people here, but there's <laughs> a village. It's all about the crew. <laughs> yeah. Without the crew, we it are nothing. so much. Yeah. Your wardrobe as Dawn is <laughs> oh. so cool. It reminds me of like kind of techno pop, oh, like fun. anime. Yeah. Like, what was the decision making there to have that be the look? Lillian. Yeah, that was all thanks to our uh, <laughs> costume designer, Lillian Fu. She had discussions with Roxy that we all talked about eventually, which was like, you know, if Dawn is this person that has been around for such a long time, mm -hmm. right? she sort of accumulated history and that includes like eras and fashion so she's sort of like like this vomited version of <laughs> all these all the fashion trends right. so i think she she looks so eccentric because she's trying mm. to take a, she's taking bits and pieces like, of all these generations yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool yeah that's a, that's that's really cool. It was really fun. Like I got to just try on all these fun clothes. I had these amazing <laughs> silver cowboy boots that I just kept. I was like, I'm just keeping these because they're amazing. And meanwhile, uh, Evan just gets a t-shirt. <laughs> like, um, like, Covered in dirt. Pants. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So there was a moment where in the desert, we needed we needed to rough him up a little bit. So he just like literally rolled around it's the best way. It's just on, the, on the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best way. It's faster yeah, than using yeah. like the what is that like prop dirt? Yeah, we had prop dirt from yeah. Lillian. I, I mean, as as the writer, did you imagine Don to look that way, or was it up to Lillian? Oh, for Don, no, oh. not at all. I think when I first wrote Don. I had her wearing like actually really casual contemporary clothes. Mm. That way when Evan meets her, he's like, no way, you're not an angel, yeah. right? I mean, going to Evan, like, what do you think he came from at the start of that? Like, why is he dirty, what, like, in your head? You know, I was going back and forth between like, was this actually a dream mm -hmm. or is this reality? And I don't know if I have an answer yet. Like, it, it changes every day. I'd say like maybe in this moment in time, it, it feels like a dream or a memory mm -hmm. of some sort. Uh, a hangover. <laughs> uh, a hangover. I, <laughs> I mean, it could be, right? No. It could, it, this could very well be like, um, not a flashback, but like one of those near-death experiences and he uh -huh. goes to this place, uh -huh. has an encounter and, and gets a chance to reconcile with with his, his mom yeah. in a way. So yeah. it kind of it feels like you're not supposed to feel com completely mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. it's still um, affecting him in a very physical way. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens to Dawn's character when she's like, it's it's as much of a big moment for her talking yes. to Evan that, you know, for him too. Yeah, like you, is. we feel like your character realizes something at the yeah. end of your conversation. Does, does she con continue with her job or is she the genie that's freed? I mean, I, I did start writing almost like a prequel for yeah. for Dawn to see Ooh. how she became the way she did. But in terms of like after... Was Dawn ever a human? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. She was. She was and then she died. And um, I mean, I guess more, oh. here's some more backstory if you want it. But like I had it in my head that she, she died, she arrived at the gates of heaven and she had a choice. Like you can either go uh, burn in hell for the rest of eternity, <laughs> or um, you can repent. And your way of repentance is to serve right. as this guardian oh, wow. angel. And so she chose that. Now I'm very curious, like... Kind of like indentured servitude. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So Basically. she's got to like make up for her sins in a way. Yeah. So, so she died not as a standardly good person, like that's what we're saying? Mm. Yeah. She's in her I would own love purgatory. To know that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's in just heaven. Sort of purgatory in heaven. Basically. <laughs> okay, you should write that. Thanks. And then I'll direct it. Oh. You will? <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first. I wanna ask Deo. Um, yes, please. I guess there was a moment for that big monologue you weren't really sure of yourself. Yeah. Um, when you finished it and you finally saw it, like how'd you feel about your performance? There's like I'll let allow myself a tinge yeah. of like, okay, we did our work. But could, um, always could be better kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, especially our generation growing up with like in the Kobe era, it's like, mm. nah, I could, I could do more. Okay, then. <laughs> if but it's, it's not, weird. If it's not too technical, what would you, how would you change that? If, like, if, I, if I could go back, I would want a better relationship with the words. I, I, I know it can be built deeper. So I, I would just approach it with what I know now after mm -hmm. three more years yeah. kind of learning to uh to go back at it i mean i would love to wow. retouch that so, monologue and see what happens you guys should just yeah do, <laughs> just do the whole thing again yeah. shoot the whole thing again because i i think that is it's it's always fun looking on pre previous work with with the knowledge gained up till that point yeah and um seeing how you could 
I wouldn't say even do it better, but do it differently. Differently right. for sure. Yeah. There's a, a balance sure. to not be like, oh, I want to override it, yeah, but yeah. it's just like, oh, I want to see what has changed, yeah. and and even what maybe something maybe it doesn't. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's exactly the same, and that's okay in that moment as yeah. long as it's honest. Yeah. I mean, it felt very honest and very authentic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It means a lot. How'd you come up with the title? Oh, so originally the title was just Evan. Mm -hmm. I I was just like, I just need something simple. Um, this was also mm -hmm. like my first longer narrative that I've written. I had only written comedic sketches beforehand. So <laughs> I was like, I just need something. I don't know, Evan, great. Um, and then over time, like, I think as we were in post, our producer, Teresa Chu, she approached me. She's like, how do you feel about changing the title? I'm like, yeah, sure. And she pitched Evan at the crack of dawn. And she's like, I know it's a little tongue in cheek, but I was like, no, I love that. Because dawn is also like, very cheeky mm. and this entire project itself it's it's the crack of the mug it's it was fun. just laid yeah good job oh. Therese. <laughs> yeah if you notice on the mug there's a, it's crack. a crack no yeah. I, I saw that immediately <laughs> chanel is very selfless in her writing mm. so when she approached me with the project it was almost like let me give you mm. this beauty um and then once we had that table read with roxy and Teresa, it, they were like Dawn is so deeply layered mm -hmm. that like we, we should have a little bit yeah. more so it's not just Evan centric because it's just as interesting to see their relationship rather than just yeah. one person's affect mm -hmm. on it. So it really is a duo. I mean, I think you understand like as a writer or, or somebody who's predominantly behind the camera, like when the attention goes on you, you're just like, oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah. no, right? Yeah. Even though even though I was acting in it, it was, it was strange because I was so focused on like, God, like this, I'm so excited for Deo. But then I was like, oh yeah, I have to do this too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to yeah. do this too. But I think, I mean, and, and to that point, you, his strong performance, it only makes it easier for you. Yeah, like, that's very true. There was a point where I feel like we just kind of, kind of let the script go and we were just in it for about a good five, six hours. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> just kind of bouncing. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's where you don't really need the improv. That's because yeah. the writing's already so good that there was um, discovery and curiosity even without having to input new words. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting when you set parameters and if you have like boundaries and structures and how can you play within that? I find that to be really interesting. Thank you so much for sharing about Evan and the Crack of Dawn. What are you guys working on now? I know it's like a dreaded question, but we're excited to know what's coming up. So why don't you tell us? Yeah, so actually Dale and I recently worked on a web series together called Weekend, which is now available on YouTube. It's a uh, week slash end. Yeah, so basically Weekend is about a group of friends who go to the desert mm -hmm. for a birthday celebration. Uh, but we soon find out on this trip that every single person is carrying a little secret. Secret. Aren't we all? And those secrets start to reveal mm. itself throughout each episode. Yeah. Uh, Super fun cast. People you'll recognize if you yes. watch anything Wong Fu. Everybody. Everybody yep. who is in this web series yeah. has worked with Wong Fu at some point. That is so true. I just basically that stole true. No, no, no. everyone. No, no, no. We, 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 we exchange freely. We share. It's open market. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's super good. Check it out. Um, Dale, what about you? Um, I mean, aside being in the weekend. Oh yeah, yeah. Weekend, you know, working on myself. I guess I'm an <laughs> uncle. Uh, oh. I have a uh, two nephews, three year olds, and one that's almost one year old. And that's been my life lately. Shout out Evan. He's the same oh, yeah. name as what? Evan. At His the crack nephew's of name is Evan. Oh, this Did is not for you. happen on purpose. Evan and Liam, love you guys. Um, but what, what's going on with me? Just uh, lots of family time. Yeah. Um, and just excited, excited for whatever's coming up to see like. Yeah what's happening this year. It's cool because you guys are both so talented in front and behind the camera. Oh. You know, a lot of respect for, for you guys for that. All right, thank you guys so much for watching Wong Fu Presents. We love sharing other work from talented artists and friends. Be sure to check out their socials and follow them because they got a lot of exciting things coming up. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hi, this short is one of three films that are part of our Wong Fu Presents series. You can check out the other two films through the links below. Wong Fu Presents has been our way to uplift other artists in the community and spotlight stories we feel need to be shared. We are so grateful that we have a platform to be able to do this, and we hope to do it more routinely. If you'd like a chance to be part of Wong Fu Presents, we are actively taking submissions. Follow the link in the description to learn how. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.